Okay, this is Willie Anderson, uh, Minister Willie Ray Anderson Jr. On today, on this Sunday, on May the 17th, 2020. May the 17th, 2020, on today, on this Sunday. And I'm reading from the Holy Bible, you know, I'm reading on from the Holy Bible, Genesis, from the book of Genesis, starting at verse, well, chapter 37, starting at verse 2, okay, and it says, I'm going to read some of it, there's a whole lot to read about Joseph, and Joseph was the uh, younger brother of these um, 11 other men that were sons of Jacob, who wrestled with the angel all night long and got his blessing. Even though, even though he got hurt after he wrestled with the angel, but he still demanded that, that angel would give him his blessing after he wrestled with that angel all night long, and his name was Jacob. And after he wrestled with that angel, and that angel told him to let him go because the daybreak is coming. Daylight is coming. He wrestled with him to daybreak because the night was almost over. So Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. So the angel just said, okay, he, he went on and said, okay, in other words, I'm going to bless you. And he, he, he blessed Jacob and he changed his name to Israel. That's where the name Israel come from right now. The children of Israel, you know, they are the children of Jacob who wrestled with the angel. To, to, to daybreak almost came. The angel had to, you know, in the hurry to leave. Anyway, they had to leave. So he went on and blessed, you know, Jacob. Like Jacob demanded, well, he wasn't going to let him go until he blessed him. And the angel told him that he, uh, he wrestled with God, you know. He's called the man who wrestled with God, you know, in other words. And God let that angel bless him and change his name to Israel. His name was Jacob. Okay, and he was one of the uh he was the father of all the children of Israel. And these eleven uh ten other sons, rather, of, of Israel who uh hated Joseph, the other son of Jacob or Israel, and they hated him. Uh, he was the favorite of his father in his old age. The Bible says he was the, uh, his father's favorite because he was the son of his old age, the Bible said. So Genesis chapter 37, starting at verse 2, reading from the Holy Bible, King James Version, please. King James Version, please. And it says, these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old. I remember I used to be 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brethren, who I just mentioned, y'all. And the lad was with the sons of Behar. They was the uh, maid servants uh, of Jacob with his, you know, other, you know, two other wives he had. He had a wife named Leah and another named Rachel. And uh, Rachel was his favorite wife, the main wife he really wanted. He didn't really want Leah. But God said that he he favored Leah because she was hated. You know, God knows when we hated. You know that? God knows those that are hated by people. God knows when you don't like somebody and you hate them for whatever reason, and uh, you you don't hate some leader, you don't hate some president, you don't hate some pastor. I mean, you got some hate for a pastor, and you you hate somebody, you know, because you just hate them, you know, because of who they are, what they say, you don't agree with them. And God knows when you hate, when you don't hate, you know. And God knew that Leah was hated, and God blessed her with more children than he did Rachel, you know, through her own body and also through her her maid servant. God said he saw that she was hated. Uh-huh. Okay, and Joseph was also hated. Now, Joseph was hated by his own brothers. Hated by his own brothers. That Jacob had by, you know, uh, Leah and, and their maid servant, you know, and Rachel's maid servant. And he had one more son by uh, Rachel, his favorite wife, and all the true wife he really loved, rather, you know, along with Leah, who was his second wife. Anyway, he said, these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lamb was with the sons of Behar and with the sons of Zephar, his father's wives. He had more than one wife. And the servant, maid servant, was included to be his wives also, along with uh, Leah and Rachel. And Joseph brought into his father their evil report. You know, some bad report. They was out there working. Now, Israel loved Joseph. Here's Joseph. Israel loved Joseph. God changed Jacob's name to Israel. And he loved Joseph more than all his children, more than all of them. <laughs> you know, they were, just, they were jealous of that, you know, because he was the son of his old age, like I just said. And he made him a coat of many colors. That must have been a pretty coat. <laughs> Jacob made his favorite son 
His favorite child above all others, a coat of many colors. It must be a pretty coat he must have had that his father Jacob made for him. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. See, God know when we hate it. God know when people hate us. And God know when all people, who else is being hated? God know when they're being hated, when his president being hated, or pastors being hated, <laughs> Uh, God's children being hated, preachers like me being hated. <laughs> God know when we being hated. God know who hate who, you know. And they made, he made him according to many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peace unto him. You know, folks can't speak peace to you. They can try to speak peace to you. They can't make no friendship with you because they got that hate still in their heart. You know, people can speak peace with their lips and mouths. You know, they can bless you with their mouth and they can they can talk about God with their mouth and can talk good about God but don't want to live for him, you know. They can quote scriptures, they can talk about what the Bible said and the Bible said that the Bible told you to do this and they tell me to preach what the Bible said. The Bible told you you got to be there tell me what I'm supposed to be as a preacher according to the Bible. But they don't be more love God. They don't want God, they won't live for God. <laughs> They're still smoking them cancer arrests. They're still drinking that beer and whiskey and fermented wine drugs, liquid drugs. That's what it is. They're still smoking their lives away with them dry tobacco leaves called cigarettes and cancer uh, uh They'll do everything, party for the devil, play the blues for the devil, cussing like the devil, cuss and talk about me like the devil, talk about you like the devil. I mean, they can tell you everything good with their mouths. Just bless. You know, the Bible said... Why blessing? He said blessing and, you know, cursing should not come out the same mouth. You shouldn't use your tongue to bless and curse too. But people do that. You know, they can talk good about you when they want to and talk good about God. But in their hearts, in their hearts, they don't care nothing about you. In their hearts, they can't stand you. In their hearts, they know they don't like you. and know they hate you in their hearts. They wish you dead and hope you get killed and all this kind of stuff. In their hearts. But with their mouth, they will speak peace. Oh, I love you, brother. Uh, God bless you, brother. Oh, my brother. <laughs> oh, my sister. You know, I love you, sister. I know. And, but in their heart, they hate you. They want you dead. They hope something bad happened to you. In the same way like it was with, with, with Joseph right here. His own brothers couldn't stand in the Bible see it right here. And it said, when his brother saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peace with him. Come on, y'all. Some people speak peace, like I just said, but they don't mean it from their hearts. And sometimes you can tell, you can feel it. You can feel these folks not at peace with you. They can be talking just as good. They'll hug you, hug, and all this hugging, and still don't really love you in their hearts. Still hate you. Hug you and don't like you. Kiss you and don't like you. Uh-uh. They can have sex with you, go to bed with you, those who do that, and still be racist, and still don't like you. Hello. That don't mean nothing. People can do things that don't mean it. Don't y'all know that? Don't y'all know people can do things that don't mean it from their heart. They can do some good works. That's why the Bible says good works ain't going to get you into heaven. People can do good deeds, good work, treat you like a gentleman. <laughs> they may treat you women like gentlemen. And they still got evil hearts. And a lot of y'all find out the hard way. Y'all get these men to treat you so nice at first. And they true colors come out later. And marriage or later on in a relationship and vice versa. Come on, y'all. So the true thing that the Bible said. The Bible said God know all things. Nobody fool God. He's in every place beholding the evil and the good. God see every wrong thing done to you and me. And nobody fool God. The police get fooled. They did human. They not God. But see, God know the truth about everything and everybody. In the church house, in the, in the in your own house, in the home, on the street, neighborhood, job, stoves, gas stations. Highway, byways, wherever. God see and know the truth. And nobody fooled God, see. That's the, that was so wonderful. I'm so glad nobody fooled God. Are y'all glad about that? I'm so glad nobody can fool Jesus. You can fool the police. They be fooled. They'll put so many innocent people behind bars. So many innocent men and women, boys and girls, and went behind bars. So the police can be fooled. But so glad, so glad nobody can fool God. Nobody can lie to him and think he don't know they lie. And <laughs> God know every lie. Hello, and he knew every truth. And the Bible said, when his brother saw that, you know, and it said, could not speak peace unto him. And it said, and Joseph dreamed a dream, you know, dreamers, you know, they call some of us dreamers. I'm a dreamer. I've dreamed so many dreams through the years. 
Since I came to the Lord, I was in high school when I was 15 years old. I didn't dream one dream after another through the year. Not every day, not every night, but through the years off and on, I have had dreams. And God has showed me things by my own life, what's going to happen. Even if I got married to the wrong woman, God showed me that first. <laughs> he showed me I'm going to get a car. I got a car. I used to ride the bus. Most of my life, I have walked and caught the bus most of my life. And I prayed that God would give me a car. Bless me with my own regular driving license, with a car, with a regular job like I got now. He blessed me with through the years now. For years now, I got, I got married too. But, you know, God showed I was going to marry even though there was the wrong ones, but still, God showed them to me while I married them. See, God has showed me things through dreams. He's also showed me the destruction of Dallas, Texas. Dream after dream, not every year, not every night, but through the years off and on. And I've been saved. I was coming to the Lord when I was 15 years old. For 40 years now, I've been with Jesus. And I ain't backslide back out in the world. Many times I've fallen the rising, but I ain't gave up on my Jesus for nothing and for nobody. Since I was a boy. And it's been 40 years now. I've been with the Lord. I've been knowing him since I was a boy. Okay. Now. And God has given me dreams through the years off and on. What's going to happen in my own life. And what's going to happen to this city called Dallas. Hello. God has showed me dreams like a prophet. The Bible said the Lord don't reveal anything except to his prophets. And the Bible said the secret things belong to the Lord. There's a lot of things we won't know. And only God would know, but the Bible said, like I just mentioned and quoted from the Bible, that the Lord reveals secret things to his prophets. And what's the prophets do? Prophets foretell the future. God showed prophets visions of what's going to happen in the future. They'll sit in the vision, be wide awoke, and a whole vision screen like a TV or something coming before a prophet's eyes. And they'll see it before their eyes while they're wide awoke and not sleep. God just brings them before their eyes, like a trance or something, in other words, if you want to put it that way, in other words. And God will show them something that's going to happen to somebody, something, or some city, or some country, or something that's going to happen in the world. That's way God show a prophet through a vision. You know, another way God showed prophets things is through dreams. You know, Joseph had a dream uh, right here in the Old Testament. And also, it was another Joseph that was getting ready to marry uh, Jesus' mama, you know, the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary had a man friend uh, named Joseph in the New Testament. You know, from the first chapter, few chapters of Matthew and Luke, you may read about them, especially in Luke, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. You'll read about how Joseph was engaged in his spouse to the Virgin Mary, who was the mama of Jesus. Okay. And uh, he wasn't going to marry her. You know, he, he found out she got pregnant, and he thought, you know, most likely like men going to do, thought she got pregnant by another man, you know. But the Holy Ghost that came upon the Virgin Mary and caused her to get pregnant with the Son of God. God had already told her through the angel Gabriel that she's going to get pregnant by that holy thing and by the Holy Ghost. All the holy thing that's in her, which was Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, that she was going to get pregnant. And she got pregnant like the angel Gabriel from God told her. And when Joseph found out about her, they was already engaged. You know, they was engaged to get married completely. And uh, he found out his, his uh, girlfriend, the Virgin Mary, Jesus' mama, had got pregnant. And he didn't understand why she pregnant. Not, by, not my baby. I ain't had no sense with her. I ain't touched her no kind of way. And the Bible says she ain't even know no man. She says she never had no kind of sexual relationship with nobody, no man. And she all of a sudden is pretty. And you know a lot of people didn't believe that. Because like, just like in the Bible days, a lot of people are the same way right now. Like they was in the Bible days. And they thought she was a little father kid. They thought she was a little whore. Yeah. And back in that time, they, they stoned the whore. So you know, a lot of times, <laughs> God commanded through the law of Moses to stone them whores. Like, what, you, you a whore? When you lay up with somebody you ain't married to, you a whore. <laughs> and you might say, she ain't no whore. Yes, you are. If you're not married, you go around and have a sex with different men, and you have a sex with different boys, and you ain't married to them, you're a little whore. You're a big, fat, a tall whore, whatever size whore. You a whore, skinny whore, whatever whore. I don't care what size you are, what race you are, what color you are, and what age you are. If you have a sex with men not the men, you're going to be with men not the men, and you ever give your life to Jesus, you ain't repentant, you ever stop doing that, you still a whore. You a whore. But Jesus will make you a new creature. You come to Jesus, he will change your life, make you a new creature, make you a clean woman again by the blood of Jesus. But you still going around, you fornicating, you ain't repentant. You ever see Jesus Christ for your Lord and Savior, you still fornicating all these different men and women, don't go with race, what color you are and they are. You a whore. You just a straight up whore, I don't care who don't like it, that's what you are. 
And that's what they thought the Virgin Mary was, Jesus' mama. They thought she was a whore. And they was getting ready to stone her, most likely. Because that was the law of Moses back at that time. Before Jesus came, you know, before he, you know, uh, grew up and died on the cross and rose again. That was the law of Moses at that time. They were getting ready to stone probably uh, Jesus' mama, the Virgin Mary. And she was a virgin at that time. She wasn't a virgin no more afterwards. After Jesus was born, because she had some more kids after Jesus was born, the Son of God was born. By Joseph, of course. Read the Bible. You'll know and you'll see. Okay. Now, Joseph didn't believe that. Like most of us men ain't going to believe that. <laughs> we ain't going to believe that if we engage to this woman or this girl and she all of a sudden pregnant, and we know it ain't about us and we ain't that obsessed with her. We know, or we think we know, we won't believe that she got some other man to go to bed with her, in other words, to get pregnant by. Uh-uh. Okay. Now, Joseph didn't believe it like we wouldn't. So Joseph went home one night, on one day or night, and he had a dream. You know, God has spoken through dreams. Like I said, he spoke to me through dreams. Things have come to bad pass I dreamed about. I dreamed I would drive my own car before I got it, and I was riding the bus most of my life. I dreamed that I had my own regular driving license. I was catching the bus and walking all the time, back and forth to church at night, and go to the place I want to go at night through the day, riding the bus and, and the train, the rail. But I dream I was driving by myself my own car and it came to pass. I dream I had my regular driving license and it came to pass. I dream I got married and it came to pass. So my dreams have come true. Two times I dream I got married and I got the first time, second time, old fashioned way I just say, even though the, uh, a crooked pastor I had did not make it completely official. He was crooked. He wanted my wife himself or one of the deacons I have, I was told. But anyway, my dreams still came to pass either way. I dream I put that ring on. By my second, you know, wife, you know, that the marriage wasn't completely official. My first wife was official, but we got married at the courthouse. Dream all that. My genes came to pass. My genes came to pass. Tornadoes came to dots. Again and again. I had dreamed that years before it even came to pass. Genes uh, I had about tornadoes coming to dots have already come to pass. 2012, and I think uh, the other years after that, and this year or last year, more tornadoes came to dots. My dreams came to pass about tornadoes coming back to dollars long before it came. Because before that, tornadoes didn't come to dollars except way back in 1950 or something in West Dallas. Now my dreams have come to pass again, over and over again. So my dreams have come to pass. That's why I believe I'm a prophet. Because I had a dream to come to pass about what's going to happen in the future. I had a dream about it first. So this is what happened about Joseph and, uh, and then Joseph, the man friend of the Virgin Mary here in the New Testament also. He dreamed that an angel came to him and told him, don't be troubled and disturbed about your woman friend or girlfriend, Mary. <laughs> Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus. He said, don't be disturbed, Joseph. This is of God, the thing that's in her, that holy thing. Talking about Jesus, that holy uh, conceivement. Jesus conceived, you know, by the Holy Ghost and the Virgin Mary. Holy Ghost, no, no man, but the Holy Ghost only. That thing, the Holy Ghost. You know, the Bible, uh, the, the angel said, that holy thing in you, that's in you by the Holy Ghost, that's in her, your girlfriend Mary, that's in her, talking about, it's a God. So don't divorce her. Uh, don't you know, don't stop the engagement, in other words. Go ahead and marry her, is what the angel told Joseph in a dream. Okay, and what did he do? He believed that angel. That angel came from God. He knew that angel came from God. And what did he do? He went on and married the mother of Jesus, the mama of Jesus. And they got married and Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary and of the Holy Ghost. And he grew up and he's the son of God. And he is still, he's still the son of God now. He was Jesus. And he's God coming to flesh. He's God coming to flesh. He's Lord of law and King of kings. Okay. So that's, that, those are just examples I give about how God still speaks through dreams, even ever since this Old Testament time in Genesis how God spoke to Joseph, who was the younger son of Jacob, and his brothers hated him because of his dreams. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, told a dream to his brothers. Somebody said, the business not to tell you your dreams to people. They'll try to discourage you, put you down, be jealous of you, don't want you to be blessed. They see you blessed, they get jealous. If they see you with a new wife, they get jealous. They see you with a new car, they get jealous. They see you in your own house, they get jealous. They see you with a good job, they get jealous. They see how God bless you all kind of ways. People get jealous. Family members and non-family members get jealous. Enemies, you know, especially. They get jealous. 
when they see God blessing you like you do. They don't like to see you blessed because they are your enemies but speaking peace with their mouths, smiling in your face, and they're going to stab you in the back trying to take your place. In other words, I'm about to say some preacher said a long time ago. Smile in your face all the time want to take your place. They see your blessing. They want your blessing. And they don't want to see you blessed, but they will smile and act so friendly with you. But the Bible says, speaking peace with their mouth, but mischief, evil towards you is in their hearts. Okay. And they couldn't speak peace to Joseph because they hated him. And a lot of them can't speak peace to us, to the children of God and preachers of God because they hate us in their heart. You know, they try, try to act like they don't when they do. Okay. And he said to them, here I pray you. Don't tell him. He's going to tell his brother about his dream. The one just hate him. The one that hate him, he's going to tell him about his dream. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we, are, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaves arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obedience to my sheaves. Uh-oh. There it is. And they didn't like that. And then it said, verse 8 of Genesis Chapter 37, and his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more. Oh, they wanted him dead more. So, woo, you know, when people hate you, they want you dead. They wish you go into an ambulance. They wish you go to the hospital and die. They hope you get killed when they hate you. Come on, y'all. They really hate you down their heart. They know they do. They may stay they don't with their mouth. But see, God knew the hearts of everybody. He knew the hearts of every person. You know when you hate somebody, you want them dead, you want them in the ambulance, I want them in jail. So you can't fool God. <laughs> you can't fool God, know your heart, and you be talking peace to folks. Like you love, love, love. You know love is a word they just say now. Anybody say they love you now, the devil say he love you with horns on his head, looking like a goat. Anybody can say they love you. <laughs> The devil say, I love you too, and know he hates you. <laughs> he be looking like a goat with them long horns sticking up on his head and say, he love you. I love you too. I love you. I don't hate you. The devil do that too. That don't mean you love somebody because you say you do. Actions be lying in words, understand? Plus, you can do good works and you still don't really love somebody. Good works, the devil can do good works. Look at me, I do good works too, looking like a goat. Come on, y'all with the horns on his head. The devil do good works. <laughs> that don't mean he's not the devil. He's still evil. He still hates you. The heart. See, the Bible said the heart is deceitful and deathly wicked. Who can know it but God? Only God know the heart. And doing good works don't mean your heart not evil. A lot of evil folks do good works. That don't mean you're not evil. And why the Bible said our righteousness are in filthy rags. Which is filthy rags is a nasty rag. So the most nasty rags you can ever think of. <laughs> Somebody try to compare that rag to a woman's body. I don't want to go into that. But they said that filthy rag, but Jesus was talking about something really nasty. The Bible was talking about something really nasty about a filthy rag. He said, all the good works we do are in filthy rags in God's eyesight. When Jesus don't live in our hearts, your heart be just as evil doing your good deeds and good works. He said, our righteousness that we do, going to church every Sunday, join a church building, join a church organization. Come on, y'all. You can do all this praying and everything good and speaking your so-called tongue. Yeah. Saying God some music that's a good. You be some of the greatest singers in the world. Woo! Play your instrument so good. Your guitar horns and your drum. And you can be some of the greatest silent preachers to the world. You can preach so good. But your heart still not be right and be just as filthy like filthy rags. Don't you hear me? May no doing how good you can preach to the world. They think you can preach. Come on, y'all. Thank you. Oh, he know how to preach. Oh, she know how to preach. Woman well, preaching. And no, she ain't supposed to be preaching. Uh-uh. But he can preach so good. Boy, these women preachers know how to preach. And still not right with God. Because they're not obeying the Bible. According to 1 Timothy chapter 2. And 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Start at verse 33 and go on down. 34, 35, 36. Don't you hear me? No matter what good you do or how good you can do something, if your heart not right, if Jesus don't live there, if the Holy Ghost is not there, if the Word of God is not there in your heart, no matter what good you do, how good you can sing, preach, whatever you know how to do good, don't you hear me? Play your instrument good. Don't you hear me? Do all that talking good. Quote the scripture good. Don't you hear me? 
Doing all that hugging and shaking hands. Still don't mean nothing without Jesus in your heart for real. Don't you hear me? If you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ for your personal Lord and Savior, that don't mean nothing. All the good you do, what I'm trying to say, don't mean a thing. Still got that racism in your heart toward people, toward black people, especially in this country of America. But you want to go to bed with us. You want us to flirt with you. You want us to go with you. Don't you hear me? Even marry somebody and you still be racist. I've heard about it. I've read about it. They can marry somebody and still racist toward them. And why the Bible say, unless you be born again of the water and the spirit, you cannot enter or see the kingdom of God. Don't you hear me? You must be born again of the water and the spirit. That's what Jesus said. That don't mean that you do a whole lot of stuff. Don't think you got love. There ain't no love. If Jesus don't live like Jesus is love. God is love. You hear me? There's really no true love in this world today without God. There's really no true love in people's hearts today without God. Anybody say they love you now? Muslim, Ku Klux Klan, KK. National, uh, what's that? Uh, national, uh, Islam, <laughs> black Muslim. They say they love you. Anybody can say they love you. Cause you are they race or you not they race. They'll say they love you. Anybody say they love you. Like love word, that's a byword these days. People say I love you behind the counters in the stove. I mean, anybody can say they love you. But do Jesus live in your heart to make you truly love? You know, to do your action line up. I mean, did you really what you're doing? You can do the good the works, like I just said, and not be real with it. But do love really live in your heart? And I'm here to tell you, the only way true love is going to live in anybody's heart, any of our hearts, is that Jesus lives there. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. True love live in the true saints' hearts. Because God is true love. Come on, all these other religions, they ain't no true love. Only God is love. False religions not no true love. These false religions. There's only, way to, there's only one way to God the Father, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I do know Muhammad, Allah, Allah, and, and Buddha, New World, New Age religion. No. All the way to God the Father is through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And he's the one that loves. He's the real love. He's the only true love that lives in the hearts of the real true saints. Hello. And the real true Christians is, is when Jesus lived with the true love. Now, a lot of y'all say y'all got love and y'all living for Satan. All that cussing and all that stuff y'all doing. You know, y'all talking about you love. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no. All that so called speaking in tongues, but you can't stand the truth of God's word that I be preaching. Uh uh. I'm talking about you got the Holy Ghost, but you don't like when I'm preaching from the Bible. Somebody's making a false statement. Okay, Genesis, going back to Genesis, about Joseph. He didn't like that dream he had about they sheaves bowed to his sheds. They didn't like that. His brothers hated him more, the Bible said, for the dream he had like that. Then the next verse, verse 9, it said that he dreamed yet another dream. You know, I had one dream after another too about what's going to happen to Dallas and to America. Okay, and it said he told his brother, he told them again, told another dream. Man, you telling people your dream didn't hate you <laughs> like I've been doing. Uh-oh. And it said, he dreamed he had another dream, and he told it to his brethren. And said, behold, I have dreamed a dream more, like I've done. He said, behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. Mean they bow down to him. Obedience mean they bow down. They bow down to Joseph. The sun and the moon and the eleven stars bow down to Joseph in his dream. <laughs> That's some kind of dream. And it said, he told it to his father, too, to his daddy Jacob. And said to his brother, his brother and his father rebuked him. Even his daddy got mad about that dream. Cause that that sounded like he going to bow for his own son. <laughs> even his daddy didn't like that. And he's the favorite of his daddy. But his daddy didn't even like that part. Talking about his daddy bowing before him too. Okay. And his father, and he told it to his father and to his brother. And his father rebuked him. He talked out and brought him mad at him, you know. And said unto him, what is this dream that thou had dreamed? Shall I and our mother and our brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And Father answered, I guess he didn't get no answer, you know. The 
that back then, you know, they respect mom and dad as a lot of them. And they, he was a little young man of God. And he said that his brother envied him. But his father observed the sin. He still observed it, though. See, Jacob was a man of God that wrestled that angel. He still observed it. You know, that's what a true godly parent going to do. Even if they don't want to accept what you say at first, but they're going to remember, they're going to ponder it, they're going to observe it. You know, true man of one of God, true mom and daddy in the Lord, they're going to observe what you say. Even if they don't believe it at first, they don't want to receive it at first, they're going to observe it. So uh, his dad observed the dream. I mean, he kept thinking about it. You know what that mean? And his brother didn't envy him. His brother, they envied him. Jealous and hated him. They envied him. They were envy and jealous like a lot of folks are today. Envy and jealous how God bless you. And said, but his father observed the sin. And they said, and said, and his brother went to feed her father's flock in, in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, do not uh, thy brother feed the flock in Shechem. And they said, come and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see where they be well with thy brethren. You know, he's out there in the field working uh, with the flocks, with the with the herds, with the uh, cattle, you know. And then it might be sheep, you know, back then. Uh, and, and they said, And well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent them out of the vale of Hebron, and, and he came to check them where his brothers were. And a certain man found him, and, and he said, Behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? Asking Joseph, There's a certain man. Might have been an angel. That certain said who he was. It was a certain man. And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went out to his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him, to kill him. They wanted him dead. Like a lot of these worldly folks want preachers dead to tell the truth. And all the prophets of old, they wanted all the prophets of old to be dead. Y'all notice that through history. Read through history in the Bible. And uh, even in, in the true prophets' life here in America. How many preachers they want dead that tells the truth. You know, they don't want them. Preachers just pop in life by everybody. They don't want them dead. But preachers who tell the truth and about the lies and deceit going on in the churches and the lies and deceit going on in the country and the lies and the deceit that's going on in the neighborhoods and the stores and the gas stations on the jobs in the church house, I say again, everywhere else on TV See, preachers who tell the truth, people want them dead. Read the Bible. Look in the Bible. They want John the Baptist. They remember John the Baptist, y'all? John the Baptist told the truth on King Herod. No, King, he was the king. The big man. He was the big cheese. He was the king. With his queen that he got from his own brother. He took his own brother's wife. Hello. Took his own brother's wife and John the Baptist preached out against it. Now, now everybody talking about positive preaching. Positive preaching. You know, a lot of preachers don't always sound positive to y'all. There's <laughs> a lot of preachers don't sound positive. John the Baptist did some preaching that didn't sound positive. <laughs> a lot of time. And you might Lord Jesus Christ did some preaching that didn't sound positive all the time. There's a lot of preachers that were done in the Old Testament by the old prophets. In the Old Testament, it didn't sound positive all the time. You know, there's a lot of preachers that don't sound positive. Talking about positive business and negative preaching. I wonder where y'all get that from. All that positive stuff and negative stuff didn't start about a few years ago. I remember how that thought. Oh, you didn't hear about no positive, negative preaching and talk and all that. That started some years ago like a lot of other stuff started in this new modern day and time. Okay. So on the Baptist preached against King Herod. And what happened? They wanted them dead. So his wife arranged for her little daughter to dance before King Herod to have a John the Baptist dead. Cut his head off. Okay. Look, let's go farther back. You know, they know they know they crucified Jesus. You know, Jesus said he came into his own, his own race of people, his own nationality, and they received him not. His own race of people didn't like him, you know. <laughs> You know, the Jesus' own race of people didn't like him because he told the truth on them. See, Jesus would tell the truth on everybody. 
but also he told the Jews on his own race of people was with the Jews at that time. Come on, y'all, and they wanted him dead. And I'm talking about them religious Jews, too. And I'm other folks that weren't so religious either. They said, crucify him. Crucify him. And I'm folks that were religious and the one that wasn't religious. That was his own race of people wanting him dead. Because he told the truth on everybody, including his own race of people. The Bible said he came to his own. His own received him out. Not. Came to his own race of people, huh? and they received him not. And they had him crucified. You hear I me? Mean? Because he said he was the son of God. And because he told the truth about their hypocrisy and a whole lot of things that were going on wrong in the temple and all over Israel at that time. The land of Israel, they call it. And they ate them out to Jacob. And they ain't that land out to Jacob, who's the father of the, of the Israelites. Hello, y'all. And they didn't like the truth. And now, look through the Old Testament some more. They had uh, Elijah. They wanted him dead. Elisha wanted him dead. A whole lot of prophets throughout the Bible. They jumped on the prophet Jeremiah because he said, Judge, we're going to come on Jerusalem. And he was a single man, wasn't married and had no kids in this world, in his life. And they haunted him dead, put him in a dungeon, hit him in the face. They slapped him or hit him in the face too. And hello, y'all, and put him in a jail or dungeon, in other words. <laughs> but he still didn't back up. He still told the truth. Don't you hear me? And when you tell the truth, even in the Bible days, they wanted them dead. Some of them they got killed, some of them they didn't kill. It's all in God's hand. Who he, who he gonna let kill his people and not kill his people? It's all in God's hand. And God was still standing by their side. And God's standing by our side right now today. That's telling the truth on you people. That's our race of people and not our race of people. That's telling the truth on you people in the church houses and out of church houses. They wanted them dead just like a lot of y'all want us dead. But God gonna let us live. As long as he wants us to live. So we can keep on telling the truth on y'all. Keep on preaching against y'all sins. Holding on to the world. Holding on to sports. Holding on to worldly music. Don't you hear me? Holding on to your cussing and lying. And all type of sin. Marriage. Gay marriage. Lesbian marriage. Killing babies through abortion. We still going to preach against your racism. Your racist words. Your racism in this country. America is a racist country. Dallas is a racist city. Don't you hear me? And we still go preach and speak against your racism. Those that are truly called by God. To preach the truth of his word and to preach the gospel and to preach the truth on everything. Not just for your Sunday school sermons to make you feel good. Hello. And a lot of y'all on us dead because we preach the truth and tell the truth on y'all. Don't you hear me? And we're not going to stop telling the truth against your racism, racist words, white people, Latino people, Hispanic, Mexican people, whatever you are, people. We're still going to preach against your racism. We're still going to preach against your racist words. No, I am. By the help of God, to God call me home. Don't you hear me? And you can't stop what God started. God said in his word, he going to keep that good work in you. He going to keep that good work in me until the day of Jesus Christ. Don't you hear me? That's going forward for me. No going back. If I have to stand on God's word by myself. Don't you hear me? Judgment is going to come on this city of Dallas, Texas, like I dream. Judgment is going to come on America, like I dream and saw in my dream. And other people I saw in their dreams and in their visions about judgment coming to America. So I'm not the only one. I did some research on that. I did some research. Other people have dreamed about the judgment of God coming to America. Other people have had visions about the judgment of God coming on America. And my old sister dreamed about the bombs blowing up here in Dallas like I have. Young people, other people, don't you hear me? God gonna send judgment on Dallas, Texas. God gonna send judgment on America. Don't you know I dream? Airplane was flying over Dallas and dropping bombs on Dallas. Don't you hear me? In my dream, right here in Oak Cliff. I dreamed that all those buildings of downtown Dallas blew up before my eyes and I was standing a long ways off in an open field somewhere and I looked at the buildings of downtown Dallas 
blowing up before my eyes like a nuclear bomb. Yes, I did. I dreamed that. And then I looked all around me on the ground. And I saw bodies of small children, small children, were laying on the ground all around me. Some was grown people, but most of the bodies of small children were laying on the ground all around me. And they wasn't moving. It's like they were dead because they wasn't moving at all. And at the same time, I saw all the buildings of downtown Dallas, Texas, blowing up before my eyes. I dreamed that. I had one dream after another. I dreamed I was looking up from the sky, in the sky, looking down from the sky. And another dream, I was looking like I was up in the sky. And somebody was standing by me. I didn't look to see who it was. And I was looking down from the sky. This is just a dream. I'm going to tell the dream as a dream. The Bible said, tell the dream as a dream. And he that speak my word, let him speak it faithfully. And what the Lord said in the Bible. And I was looking down from the sky on Dallas, Texas. And I saw Dallas on fire. And I saw airplanes flying over Dallas in my dream. And I saw men jumping from the airplanes and parachutes in my dream. You hear me? And I heard somebody standing by me. I never did look to see who it was, but standing by me while I was looking down on Dallas from the sky. And somebody was saying that Dollars would be destroyed or diminished. Meaning, meaning Dollars is going to be destroyed. Diminished means going to be destroyed. They were saying Dollars is going to be diminished. They kept saying different words related to that about what's going to happen to Dollars Tesla. And who this person was standing by me, I don't know who it was because I didn't even look to see who it was. But they were standing by me. It was an angel or the Lord himself, I don't know, in my dream. And I was looking down from the sky and I saw Dollars on fire. I'm saying it again. And I saw airplanes flying over Dallas, saying it again. And I saw men jumping from the airplanes and parachutes in my dream while I was looking down from the sky on Dallas. And somebody standing by me saying Dallas is going to be diminished, meaning Dallas is going to be destroyed. I dreamed that. That's one of my dreams about destruction of Dallas. One dream after another. Dream tornadoes come to Dallas. Four tornadoes came to Dallas. You hear me? And my old friend who died back in 1999. She was one of the mothers of the church. She was about 91 or 92 years, years old when she died. And the God had raised her from the dead in my dream. And she was looking at those four tornadoes with me come to Dallas. And she did not pray them away. Don't you hear me? Hello. Woo. My mama prayed them away. I had another dream. My mama prayed them away. See, my mama do that for real. She prayed for tornadoes away for real. But my old lady friends. The God that, you know, took her home. She died in 1999. She was in my dream. And after I had the dream about my mama praying them away, but she did not pray them away. In my next dream, after I prayed about my mom, after I dreamed about my mama, I mean. Y'all hear me? God is soon to come. Jesus is going to return, but he's going to bring destruction on this world. You hear me? Those tornadoes came. Some of my dreams have already come true. You hear me? Tornadoes tear up and tornadoes destroy. God is saying, repent and turn back to him. But I know this through the history of the world and of the Holy Bible. A lot of God's men get killed for telling the truth. Jesus, they wanted him dead. The prophet Jeremiah and other different people in the Bible, they wanted them dead for telling the truth. They killed John the Baptist. Some God prophet, they let, God let them kill and some he didn't let them kill. Apostle Paul lived a long time before Nero that Caesar Nero could kill him. He they lived a long time. He lived to be an old man, the Bible said, preaching the gospel. So much God gonna let him live long, so much he not. But God gonna spur our lives, as long as he wants to spur our lives, to let us keep telling y'all the truth about y'all self and y'all country and y'all nation. You hear me? We're gonna still preach as long as God wants to preach. And I'm gonna live as long as God wants me to live. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to keep on living as long as God Almighty wants to live. And I dreamed about destruction coming to America. Ain't nobody coming up without God. Now these folks around here, nation of Islam and all this nation of Islam, you hear me? You know, only Jesus answers. All this cussing y'all carrying on. America ain't going to let no black folks come in no far they want to go. Y'all know this is white America. This is still really in other words, white America. And ain't no nation in I'm going to win over no white America trying to make you black folks do right. But most of y'all don't want to do right. Most of y'all don't care nothing about no racism. Y'all don't care about racist words. You call each other racist words. You cuss me out, call me racist words along with the white boys and, and Latinos and Mexicans. Y'all call me racist words right along with them. Y'all take side with them against me because I'm not part of you. I don't really fit. You know God's people don't really fit with your crowd. God's people don't fit with the black folks when they ain't right. 
They don't fit with the white Mexicans of name, right? They don't fit with the Chinese or the Asians or India or Native America. If you ain't right, we don't fit with y'all anyway. We misfits in this world. The Bible says, whom the world not worthy. The, the world not worthy of the saints. We don't fit with y'all, what the Bible means too, I believe. We don't fit with you worthy folks. I don't care what you are. Nation of Islam, Black Panthers, uh, KKK, skinheads. <laughs> Now you supposed to be now you supposed to be a Christian. You ain't fit with them either. You just if you done call yourself a Christian and you trying to be a skinhead and trying to be a Ku Klux Klan and a, a called so called white supreme. You ain't nobody supreme but God. Cause you white, you're not supreme. You gotta call yourself that. Call yourself whatever you want to call you. Whatever you want to call yourself, you ain't no supreme. Only God supreme. But so called, I say so called white supremacists. You fit with them. You ain't no Christian. You ain't born again. You ain't no Christian, white man. A white woman, a white boy, a white girl. You're not no Christian with your so-called white supremacist group and your Ku Klux Klan group and your uh, skinhead group, whatever racist group. You ain't no Christian, white boy, white girl, white man, white woman. You're not no Christian with your worldly racist groups. Same thing about the black folks. You ain't no Christian with your nation of Islam or your uh, black parents or whatever it is that Jesus is not in. And if you still got that in you and you don't want Jesus and all that cussing and drinking like the white man, you smoking the white man's cigarettes, you drinking the white man's beer or the devil's beer, I, mean, I believe that devil behind it all, of course. I call it the white man's sucker. That's how, the, that's how the black folk got introduced to it over in this country is smoking cigarettes and drinking beer, whiskey, and fermenting wine. He's introduced it to the black folk by the white man. Okay, that's why I call it that. But the, really the devil behind it all is sin. Behind it all, the devil is sin. But anyway... You doing all that, you copping off the white man, and you ain't gonna get nowhere in this country. Ain't nobody get nowhere without Jesus Christ. Black folks are going down along with this country without Jesus Christ. That's why we can't stick together. Black folks don't stick together. Black folks fight and want to kill each other. Put guns on me, cuss me out with the white boy and Mexican boys, and, and, and call me the N word with the white boy and Mexican boy. This young, your young, your young men walking the street, young boy walking the street, cussing me out. Black, I'm black, and they black. They cuss me out, talking about knocking me out. They'll pull a gun on me along with the grown black folks. And talk about my black mama, who's an old black pioneer woman. Talk about my black mama. You black folks ain't going nowhere without God. I don't care what you say, nation of Islam, black Panthers, or uh, Negro world, black church, or whatever they're trying to be like them. Y'all ain't going nowhere without the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care what y'all say. Y'all love racism. Y'all love racist people. We both to love everybody, but I'm talking about y'all love when somebody you don't care about their racism. That's what I'm talking about. You got to love your enemies. Jesus said to do that. But he ain't said you got to join your enemy. He ain't said you got to have sex with your enemy to love him. <laughs> he ain't said you got to date your enemy. He ain't said you got to marry your enemies to love him. The Bible didn't say that. But you got to love them as human beings, love them as God's creation, love them as somebody's soul that need to be saved. I'm all racist. Hello. But you not put yourself no racism or racist words. So nobody does not be want to marry. No. Go with them and date them and their racism. No. God don't like racism either. Jesus don't like racism either. Read the Bible. He has no respect to a person of color skin or race of person. God made us all in one blood, the Bible said. God don't have no respect to a person. You ain't better nobody with your pale and pink skin there. You ain't no better nobody with your pill and peace skin. And you black folks, y'all need to get Jesus in your heart because y'all need your mind elevated. Y'all need to stop being so stupid and so a weak. Black people, some of the weakest race of people on the earth can't even stick together. Like all other races can stick together, but black people. And y'all come over here talking about nation Islam. And Black Panther ain't been talking that stuff for years and years. And ain't changed nothing. And you ain't gonna change nothing to white man America. <laughs> And this not all over the world with that. Now that kind of talk. Only Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Son of God, is the answer for black people. And for all of the races, he's the answer for the black people. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's the only answer, the only way to life, the truth. He's the only one. He's the only way, the truth, and the life. To God the Father and to go to heaven, because this world ain't going to get no better for nobody. Ain't going to get no better for us. Blacks ain't gonna get no better for nobody white or Mexican. This world getting worse and worse. God said men shall wax worse and worse. They go for women, children too. Wax and worse and worse. Don't respect grown people like they used to no more. Talking about knocking me out. I'm going to be your granddaddy. You black boys. <laughs> and think you're going to live long without Jesus? You better think again. All y'all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. He's the only answer. Nothing else. No Islam. No Black Panther. No KKK. 
None of them is there. So only the Lord Jesus Christ is the answer for our soul. Because this world is going to be turned into hell. America's already turned into hell. The Bible said, the nation that forget God shall be turned into hell. And America being forgetting God every year. And America being turned into hell. Getting worse and worse. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who suffered and died on the cross for our sins and rose again from the dead for our salvation. He's the only answer. He came to the world that we may have life and have life more abundantly. Nothing and nobody else is the answer by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Nobody else, y'all. Let's turn to Jesus. If all shall confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That go for me, you, everybody. Only Jesus now, this world going to be turned into hell. God said he grieved them to his heart that men have become so grieved and so evil. Come on, y'all. And the Bible said the same thing is going to happen like it was in the days of Noah. Jesus said the same thing going to happen again. This time it ain't going to be water. It's going to be fire this time, y'all. Whether it be nuclear bombs or just fire sent from heaven, God going to destroy this world with fire. Then it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And going to be no more racism. <laughs> No more of this foolishness that we've been preaching against and preaching about. No more of all this. This is going to be over. It's going to be a new earth and a new heaven. The new Jerusalem is going to come down. Come on, y'all. And all those who follow Satan and reject Jesus Christ, you're going to be going to the lake of fire with the devil. You're going to the bottomless pit. You're going to the lake of fire with your daddy, the devil. You hear me? All races that reject Christ, y'all going to go to hell together. That's why y'all go to bed together. Y'all don't care about racism. That's why you don't care about racism. Y'all got the same daddy, the devil. <laughs> I understand now. I see why black people go to races, go with racist whites, racist Mexicans, and racist Asians, or racist Native American, racist Indian, or whatever. I see why y'all can go to bed with racist people. Because y'all got the same dad of the devil. <laughs> you know, what race you are, why you, you will go to bed with a racist white boy, a white man, a white woman, a Latino old Mexican that's racist. You can go to bed with them. You can marry and have babies by them. Because you don't care about racism. Because y'all got the same dad of the devil. I see that now. You cheer to the devil. Y'all go to bed with each other. Sure you do. You'll go to hell together. You'll have parties and dance together. Because y'all same children of the devil. Y'all daddy is the devil. So that way y'all can go to bed and marry racist people and everything. Kiss them. And do all that talk. But you'll still go to bed with a racist person. You'll talk against racism, but still go to bed with it and marry it. Hypocrites. Black folks, hypocrites, white messes. All y'all hypocrites without God. Y'all daddy the devil. Okay. Turn to Jesus Christ. He'll deliver you from being a hypocrite. And he's the only way, the truth, and the life to God the Father. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He can save you from all this. God, destruction is going to come on this city. I dreamed it. Other people dreamed it. God going to judge this city of dollars. God going to judge America. I dreamed Russia and America got into a war and bombs blowing up buildings. And at the end of my dream, Russia won the war against America. It's time to turn back to God, everybody. God allowed these things for a reason, COVID-19, 2020, on the day, May the 17th. Uh, God let these things happen for a reason, because Jesus is soon to come back. Let's turn back to God, y'all. Jesus is going to come back. These, these things might not ever be restored. God, we don't know what's going to happen later on now. This is Jesus, I don't know how long it's going to be. I might be out till Jesus come back, to the Antichrist take over this world. Y'all hear me? The son of the devil. And everybody going to be fighting him, except for the true saints. And we most of are going to have to die. All of faith in Christ and that happened. So let's turn back to y'all. Let's turn back to God, y'all. Let's turn back to the God of the Holy Bible. Uh, Muhammad, not the way. Islam, not the way. Those so-called virgin Mary, not the way. Because that's not Jesus' mama. Jesus' mama, not no virgin no more. <laughs> so whoever y'all saw is not God and not Jesus' mama either. You Latino or whoever, talking about something, lady or something. You hear me? Jesus soon to come back. Jesus is the only way to God the Father. He's the only way to heaven. Let's get saved. Ask God to forgive us. Tell God, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Save me, Lord. And fill me, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. I ask in Jesus' name. Tell God to do it for you. He'll do it. I've done it. I've done it. I don't know how many times. <laughs> Tell God to do it. I receive Jesus Christ my personal Lord and save it right now forever. And this is my name, Minister Willie Ray Elson Jr. I have accepted Jesus Christ, God's Son, the Son of God. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lord. He is Lord. He is God coming to flood. And I receive the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, right now in my heart for my personal Lord and Savior, right now forever. Everybody else and do what you want to do. God give us invitation. His hands are stretched out still all day long. Come to Jesus as you are. Jesus soon to come. Tell God you're sorry. Choose you this day who you will serve. Choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. 
with you. God bless. Bye.